Welcome to Excellent Grades Academy. This is Dr. Bison AM. Welcome to Physiology. Today we're looking at the excitation contraction coupling in muscles, specifically in smooth muscles and in skeletal muscles. Let's get into this video and see. Okay. So now, the good question is what is excitation contraction coupling? So this is a process by which the depolarization of a muscle cell sarcolemma so the muscle cell sarcolemma which is just a cell membrane of the muscle leads to initiation of contraction so it leads to initiation of contraction so now if we can revise a little bit the transmission across the neuromuscular junction if this is our synaptic knob here so synaptic knob what happens is that when an action potential is propagating down the synaptic knob, there's going to be entrance of calcium because the voltage-gated calcium channels are open and there's going to be release of a neurotransmitter which is acetylcholine. So we know this neurotransmitter is acetylcholine and it will be released in the synaptic cleft. So when it is released in the synaptic cleft, it is going to attach to the nicotinic receptors on the surface of the motor end plate meaning the motor end plate is simply a plate where the neuron and the muscle meet okay when the nicotinic receptors which are these here nicotinic receptors when the nicotinic receptors are stimulated sodium channels will open at the muscle end plate so these ligand gated sodium channels will open and they will lead to an influx of sodium in the cell this influx of sodium which is positively charged into the cell the muscle cell will lead to the production of an end plate potential so an end plate potential end plate potential so this is a, a disturbance in the resting membrane potential where the resting membrane potential becomes more positive so it increases and it will eventually lead to an action potential once the threshold stimulus is reached okay now once an action potential is generated in the muscle cell it starts getting it starts it's propagated through the the membrane uh cell membrane which is called the sarcolemma now the sarcolemma so this one here is the sarcolemma sarcolemma is the cell membrane for a muscle cell the sarcolemma has got transverse tubules which lead into the sarcoplasm these transverse tubules so these are what we call t tubules so the t tubules are in pro close proximity with the terminal system of the sarcoplasmic reticulum so it's going to be in the so on each side of the T tubule, you've got these that are called the terminal systems. So same terminal system of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. You know that the sarcoplasmic reticulum of a muscle cell has got a lot of calcium. It is specialized in calcium storage. Okay. So now the anatomy where you have one T tubule and two systems of the sarcoplasmic reticulum this is what we call a triad so this triad anatomically is very important in the contraction of muscles of skeletal muscles okay so now when an action potential is propagated in the sarcolemma it goes and it depolarizes the t tubules now the t tubules have got receptors here that are voltage sensitive these receptors here are what we call dehydropyridine. So dehydropyridine pyridine receptors. They are denoted as DHPR. So these dehydropyridine receptors are me mechanically attached to receptors in the sarcoplasmic reticulum which are known as the Renaudine receptors. So the renaudine receptors. They are denoted as RYR. 
These renardin receptors, if they are stimulated, they lead to calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm. Okay, so a quick recap. When an action potential is propagated in the sarcolemma, it is going to go down the T-tubules. In the T-tubules, there are calcium-sensitive receptors which are known as the dehydropyridine receptors, the DHPR. These calcium-sensitive receptors are mechanically attached to the renaudine receptors. These renaudine receptors will open the calcium channels in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and calcium is going to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm which is just the cytoplasm of the cell. Now when the calcium is released in the sarcoplasm that's where it is going to attach to the thin filaments of the sarcomere. So as we go on in this video we're going to look at the anatomy of the sarcomere and the anatomy of the thin filaments and the anatomy of the thick filaments and how contraction happens. Okay, so the sarcomere is like this. So the sarcomere, a sarcomere is the most basic functional contractile unit contractile unit of a muscle made up made up of thin and thick filaments thick filaments on a myofibril okay so the myofibril the myofibril will consist of several sarcomeres, several sarco sarcomeres. So you know what? Myofibrils are the structures that are found in the sarcoplasm. All right. So the structure of a sarcomere is like this that you are supposed to know. So a sarcomere is bounded by two discs that are called Z discs. So this, so this here is what we call a Z disc. So this is a Z disc. Z disc. And then this side here you've got a Z disc. So it's supposed to be like this. Drawing is not really my forte. Okay, so this is a DZ disc here. So this is a Z disc. So between the two Z discs, you have the sarcomere. So this is a sarcomere from here to here. This is what we call the sarcomere. So this sarcomere is made up of this. This is these are thin filaments. And then on the middle we've got what we call an M line. Middle line. And then from the middle line you've got attached thick filaments. So these are thick filaments. Thick filaments. Okay. So, from here up to here, the full length of the thick filaments is what we call the A-band. The A-band. When calcium is released in the sarcoplasm, it will go and bind to the thin filaments. So, this is the thin filaments. Thin filaments. And then, this is the thick filaments. When calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it will go and bind the thin filaments. When it binds the thin filaments, there's going to be a configurational change on the thin filaments. And then the heads of the thick filaments are going to bind the thin filaments. And there's going to be a sliding movement towards the M line. So these two Z discs are going to move towards the M line. 
when these two Z discs move towards the M line, the sarcomere is going to shorten. Shortening of the sarcomere is what brings about contraction. Shortening of the sarcomere brings about contraction. Okay. So, let's look at the anatomy of the thin filaments and see how calcium binds to the thin filaments. And later on, we're going to look at how the thick filaments are going to bind to the thin filaments so that the sarcomere reduces. Okay. So now, the thin filament, the thin filament is made up of three proteins. Most abundantly, one is called actin. So actin, so this has myosin binding sites. Myosin binding sites. Where myosin binds. Myosin binds. So when I talk about myosin, just know that myosin is a thick filament. So myosin will bind to the actin. Number two, you've got tropomyosin. Tropomyosin. So tropomyosin, this is the protein. So this covers or hides the myosin binding sites. So it hides the myosin binding sites on actin. Number three is what we call troponin. Troponin has got three components. So it has three components. Three subunits. We also call them subunits. So what there is troponin C so troponin C, this is where calcium binds on the thin filaments. Thin filaments. So when calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it will go and bind troponin C. So this is one. Number two, you've got troponin I. Troponin I will make sure that actin and tropomyosin are bound together. Tropomyosin are bound together so that there is no contraction. The third one is troponin T. Troponin T just makes sure that troponin and tropomyosin are bound together. Okay. So now, what will happen is that when calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it is going to bind to troponin C. When it binds to troponin C, it is going to inactivate troponin I. When troponin I is inactivated, tropomyosin is going to release the myosin binding sites on actin. And then myosin can bind on actin. Okay, so if you... If that, you didn't understand that, you can simply rewind the video and listen to it again. Alright, so now, this is just a schematic diagram that is showing us the sarcoplasm and the triad. So this is the, the sarcolemma here. Sarcolemma. So when an action potential is propagated in the sarcolemma, it goes and then it go, comes in the T-tubules. In the T tubules, it will stimulate the DHPR, and then the DHPR will stimulate the YR, and then there's going to be a release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is here. So there's calcium here. There's a lot of calcium. When calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it will go here. This is the sarcoplasm. In the sarcoplasm, which is just the cytoplasm of the muscle, they are thin filaments. So here, the red ones, these are the thin filaments. And then the, the purple ones, these are the thick filaments. Calcium is going to bind to the thin filaments on troponin C. When it binds to the thick filaments on troponin C, it will cause tropomyosin 
to release the myosin binding sites on actin and then myosin is going to bind to actin and there's going to be a sliding movement where the thin filaments are going to move towards the M line by the use of ATP and that will cause the sarcomere to shorten. Shortening of the sarcomere is what will cause contraction. All right. So we've already talked about this. That is the, the, the thin filaments. That's tropomyosin here. There's actin here. And then this is troponin here. All right. Okay. So now let's just review the steps that are involved in skeletal muscle contraction. So this is skeletal muscle contraction. The, this is the excitation part. So discharge of a motor neuron, release of neurotransmitter, which is acetylcholine, binding of acetylcholine to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And then there is increase in sodium and potassium conductancy in the end plate. And then there is generation of an end plate potential. And there is generation of action potentials in the muscle fibers. And then there's going to be inward spread of depolarization along the T-tubules. We've talked about this. And then there is release of calcium from terminal systems of sarcoplasmic reticulum and diffuse to thick and thin filaments. And then we've got binding of calcium to tropom troponin C and covering of myosin binding sites on actin. And then there's formation of cross linkages between actin and myosin. And there's a sliding movement of the thin on thick filaments. So meaning that the, the thin filaments are going to slide towards the M line. And there's shortening of the sarcomere producing movement, which is contraction. Okay, now, if the contraction happens, what will happen for it to relax? So for the muscle to relax, there must be calcium that should be pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. How does calcium, so how is calcium pumped back, pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum? So the pumping back of calcium into the sarcoplasmic reticulum employs or uses uh, a channel that we call sarcoplasmic or endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase channel. So this channel uses ATP. So uses ATP to pump calcium, to pump calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So for the relaxation of the muscle to take place, it uses ATP. So calcium is pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum using the secca channels, and there's going to be release of calcium from troponin. And then there will be cessation of interaction between the actin and the, myo the myosin. And then relaxation takes place. Okay. So this simply um, shows a summary of how uh, the, the, the myosin, so this is the myosin thick filaments, binds to the thin filaments here. Okay. So now the myosin head is bound with ADP and high energy phosphate. Phosphate is here, and then the ADP is here. Now, calcium binds troponin on actin myofilament, exposing the myosin binding sites. And then the myosin head is going to bind to the, to the actin, which will form a cross bridge. And then if the cross bridge is uh, formed, ADP and inorganic phosphate are released from the myosin, and the thin filaments, this one that is in green here, is going to slide over the myosin head here. That is called the sliding movement. Okay, The sliding movement is as a result of what we call a power stroke. So where the ATP, where the myosin head is going to move towards the it is going to bend towards the M line and it will cause the, um, the actin thin filaments to slide over it. 
So when it slides toward the M line, the sarcomere is going to shorten, thus causing contraction. So now, after that happens, new ATP molecule joins the myosin head, causing it to separate from the actin. ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate, and the myosin head is released from the from the thin filament, and the, the sarcomere goes back to its original size. Okay, and contraction is achieved. Then calcium is pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum using ATP and using the seca channels. As long as calcium is not pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum using the seca channels, contraction will not cease. So there's going to be sustained contraction and there might also be tetanus. Okay, so this is a diagram showing us what we've just been explaining. All right, so this is a sarcomere. It's very important for you to know this structure and where it is found on the myofibril. All right, so now that was excitation contraction coupling in skeletal muscle. Let's look at excitation contraction coupling in smooth muscles. Excitation contraction coupling. In smooth muscles. So in smooth muscles, there are three ways in which. So they are three ways in which smooth muscle contracts. Smooth muscle contracts. One. Is called the neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter or hormone mechanism. So this uses what we call a GQ protein uh, coupled receptor. Coupled receptor. The second one is what we call the catecholamine, catecholamine mechanism. So this uses what we call a GS, G-stimulatory protein coupled receptor, protein coupled receptor. The third one is what we call the stretch or the spontaneous depolarization. Spontaneous depolarization mechanism. The most common one is this one here, the most examinable one. So let's start with this. The GQ protein coupled receptor. So what happen happens here is that if this is this your sarcolemma for the smooth muscle, the cell membrane for the smooth muscle, and you've got a receptor here. So this receptor here is a GQ protein coupled receptor. Protein coupled receptor. It is denoted as GPCR. If a hormone comes and binds on this GQ coupled receptor, it will activate a, a an enzyme intracellularly known as so this one activates activates an enzyme that is called phospholipase C this is denoted as PLC this phospholipase C phospholipase C so this phospholipase C will convert so it will convert a membrane lipid that is known as PIP2 the full name is what we call phosphatidyl phosphatidyl inositol inositol bisphosphate bisphosphate into IP2 IP2 is simply inositol 
IP3 rather, IP3, inositol triphosphate. Triphosphate. And DAG, which is diacyl glycerol. So when these are produced, these are what we call secondary messengers. Okay, so these are secondary messengers. This IP3 that is produced will go, so it will bind to IP3 sensitive, sensitive calcium receptors, receptors on the sarcoplasmic reticulum causing, causing release of calcium. So it will cause release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, this calcium that is released is going to bind a protein called calmodulin. So, the calcium that is released binds calmodulin. Calmodulin. So, what will happen is that there's going to be a calcium plus calmodulin calmodulin causing what we call a calcium calmodulin complex this calcium calmodulin complex will activate an enzyme that we call myosin light chain kinase light chain kinase okay kinase this enzyme is going to phosphorylate. So this phosphorylates or in other words activates or activates myosin light chain. So it will activate myosin light chain. Myosin light chain which is just denoted as MLC to Phosphorylated myosin light chain. So it will add a phosphate to myosin light chain. So this is an activated form of the myosin light chain. This activated myosin light chain then form, so it forms cross bridges. Cross bridges with actin. So when the myosin, the activated myosin light chain forms cross bridges with actin, it will bring about contraction. Contraction. So that's how contraction occurs using ATP. All right. So this is a general pathway. As long as calcium is released in the sarcoplasm of a smooth muscle, this is what happens. So this was how a GQ protein works. Now let's look at how a GS protein works. So this is your sarcolemma and this is your receptor. This receptor here is a GS protein coupled protein coupled receptor. So this works uh, with a slightly different mechanism that, than the GQ protein coupled receptor. So a catecholamine will come and bind here. After a catecholamine binds, this will activate an enzyme. So activates adenylate, adenylate cyclase. So this, this, this enzyme adenylate cyclase will convert. So it converts ATP to cyclic A cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP is going to cause release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And some of it will be converted to protein kinases. Protein kinases, which will cause phosphorylation of some enzymes. Okay, so now the calcium that is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum will now and enter this. It will bind with calmodulin 
activate myosin light chain kinase and this will phosphorylate the myosin light chain kinase forming the activated myosin light chain which will form cross bridges with the actin and it will cause contraction the third mechanism is the stretch mechanism so stretch what stretch does is that stretch will depolarize so it will depolarize the sarcolemma of the smooth muscle so sarcolemma of smooth muscle so smooth muscle when the sarcolemma of the smooth muscle depolarizes it will open voltage gated calcium channels so it will open calcium channels the calcium channels will lead to calcium influx in the cell calcium influx this calcium that influxes the cell will cause further release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum so this one causes further release further release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum okay so this calcium will now go and bind with calmodulin calmodulin and then they will activate the myosin light chain kinase just like the the common pathway okay so that's how the three ways in which smooth muscle is contracted those are the mechanisms now there's a very common question in the exam it's like this this question everyone should know how to answer it okay so why does acetylcholine cause contraction cause contraction in most smooth muscles in most smooth muscles but causes relaxation causes relaxation in vascular smooth muscle vascular smooth muscle so we've already talked about the mechanism of contraction in most smooth muscles but when acetylcholine binds the muscarinic receptors okay so if this is the sarcolemma okay so these are receptors that are called muscarinic receptors so muscarinic receptors these muscarinic receptors are found on endothelial cells. So this is a sarcolemma for endothelial cells. Endothelial cells in smooth muscle. Which is in the vessels. So it's vascular smooth muscle. So when acetylcholine comes and binds here, what it will do is that it will stimulate the muscarinic cells and these muscarinic cells will lead to the endothelial cells producing a substance that we call nitric oxide. Now, this nitric oxide will cause relaxation of smooth muscle. So it won't stimulate smooth muscle, but it will cause relaxation of smooth muscles. And that's why, that's why in vascular smooth muscle, there's relaxation when acetylcholine acts there. Why? Because there's production of nitric oxide from the endothelial cells. Hence, there's going to be relaxation of smooth muscles and relaxation of smooth muscle leads to vasodilation. Your blood vessels are going to vasodilate. So if you, you are too excited, acetylcholine is produced, your heartbeat goes up, but your blood vessels are going to vasodilate. They will dilate. All right, I hope you've learned something. You can register with us for lessons on the number that was on the screen plus 2609754977 for all your physiology lectures lessons and all your anatomy lessons see you in the next video